Okay, so the first thing I want to do in this fourth video making this custom emoji within Photoshop with vector shapes is I want to save my progress. So, so far I've started it twice in two different ways. And I'm going to continue with this one, but right now it's still untitled one, which means if anything turned off, I have never saved this. If it ever glitched, I would lose all of this work. So I want to do file, save as. And then I'm going to add a description of the project. And I'm going to save it to my um, digital art folder. I recommend for you guys just save it to the desktop and then you can move it into your folder. And I'm going to put it into my exercise 2 folder within my digital art folder as a PSD file. And that will save all of these different shape layers. So by using this white rectangle, I can kind of overlap. And by transforming it, the, uh, the eye inside there. And I can warp it. And I can create kind of subtleties in the shape. Like so. So very often, just like we do with the glasses, we can make complex shapes by overlapping these kind of cutouts. And if they're, the paper or if the color of the, the path matches, then you're never going to be able to tell the edge of it as long as you don't have a stroke turned on. I want it to look a little bit more menacing. Maybe I angle it this way. And I kind of like that. Another option is I can make a drop shadow, which might be nice. And I can duplicate a shape, bring it down, and change its color. I'm going to use kind of a, a darker gray. And then I can move it behind using command left bracket, right? And then I can actually play with the opacity so that that color tones everything that's underneath it. I'll take it down to like about 38% and then I'll transform it and just squeeze it in to match with the angle of the eye. Like so. The nice thing about black shapes is they will always be black. There's no way to, to shade or darken those. So this is what I have so far right, on that side. Same thing with this eyeball. If I don't want that eye, the white of the eye to come so high, I can do a few things. I can cover it with a yellow shape that matches the, the skin, or I can just warp it and tuck the top part of that eyeball down behind the glasses. So you see the, the order of the vectors really matters. And then if I wanted to do something similar on the other side, I want to use the move tool and hold down shift and select all those shapes. So there's a bunch of shapes in different places. And I'm going to hit command J, it will duplicate them, and then command T. Oh, I missed the uh, the white shape. So let me hit return and then go back before I duplicate it. So I want to select everything with shift and the move tool. See if it can get everything. And then I'm going to uh, Hit Command J and then transform and then flip horizontal, just like I did with the glasses. And then I can move all of those shapes to the other side. And I can scale them and play with them a little differently. So the eye looks different. And then I can tuck individual shapes down below. So like this white shape, I can use left bracket and move it underneath the glasses. 
and the shadow shape I can kind of tuck up. So I have these slight variations in the eyes. What's next? I want the, the little tongue shape. That's pretty simple to do. It change its color to that kind of rusty color. I can zoom in on it and then I'm going to Command T, move it up and warp it, turn it more into that tongue shape, kind of that slightly curved half oval shape. And that might be a useful shape in other parts of the composition too. So now this is what I have. If I want to move it up above the mouth, I can just drag it and drop it above, or I can do command right bracket to move it up through the layers. And then I think I need some, some white teeth. So I'm going to do that with the ellipse, using a lot of ellipses, a really narrow one like this, fill that with white, move that up above, trying to keep an eye on the time here. It's above the mouth, but, but below the uh, tongue. Center it, I can tweak that shape a little bit by warping, tucking it up, maybe turning down the corners. And maybe not, I actually kind of like it just straight. We'll get, we'll get to that after we've done the critiques. Or I might want to make it match the top of the mouth a little bit better. So just showing you all the versatility you have. Like that. Okay, then I want to match that, duplicate it, make it black. This will be the back of the throat or maybe a dark gray. And then use transform, free transform, command T to shrink it down. Kind of interesting. And then I'm thinking I want a different color for this. Maybe I want something a little more stubbly looking. And maybe I can duplicate that and use it in other places as well. Like on the sides. So now I'm thinking what actually makes sense with like the outsiders. And then I can duplicate that and then flip it horizontally and move it to the, whoops, I didn't duplicate it first. Ah. Transform, flip it. Okay, hit return. Now let's, let's get it a little bit tighter. I want this to look like 50 sideburns, because why not? Okay, now I can take this and I can match it on the other side. So Command J, Command T, right click within, flip it horizontally. Like I said, we're going to be doing a lot of repetition, and that's how you'll learn it, these techniques. So now this looks like a, a balding middle age punk. So I need hair. I'm going to go ahead and grow my canvas size to give me some space for hair. Make the height 14 inches, grow from the bottom. 
And now I'm going to show you the custom shape tool. You can also use uh, typefaces. Custom shape tool will be different for different versions of Photoshop. This gives me some weird ones. I don't know if I love these. It gives me wild animal vector shapes I can use. It might be interesting to put a, a fox on his head. So let's try that. and then modify that fox shape. But basically custom shapes are complex vector shapes. And because we can't build our own vectors for this, we can instead use these complex ones and warp them and change them. Oh, where did it go? Into what we need. So I want something that looks like greaser hair. So transform, stretch it, hold down shift, to distort it. Let's warp it. I'm going to wrap it around this guy's face. <laughs> it's already looking very emo. There we go. I don't know if you would guess that it was a fox, but it can work. So these creative solutions that we come up with in digital art. I don't love the bottom there, the kind of pinching off, but I gotta be happy with it for now. So let me change that color to like a dark gray or brownish dark gray. And then let me try moving that down beneath the glasses. See what makes sense. That kind of works. I can always keep warping it and try to hide some of those things I don't like, like that, underneath some of the other shapes. Okay, then I can change the color of these sideburns to match the hair if I want. Or maybe just be a little bit lighter than the hair. So I use the eyedropper and then just shift it a little bit lighter. Same thing here. To match the color, you just click the color you want. And now I feel like I just need like a purple black eye. So I'm going to duplicate this. Make it bigger, like a lot bigger. Change its color. So it's kind of dark purple, and then move it behind the eye. And that makes it seem like it needs to be a lot lighter. Or I can just use um, opacity. Since purple and yellow are complements, it's going to kind of go to a grayish, which can be nice. And then I can play with warping it and customizing that black eye shape a little bit more. And then if I want a little bit more of that, I can duplicate it and then shrink it, holding down Option, and it will give me kind of those concentric circles. And because it's um, a different opacity, it will look darker and darker as I shrink it in. So if I duplicate it again, Command-T, hold down Option while I shrink it, that will look more like the bruise. And if I want to use some light logic, I can duplicate it one more time, shrink it and stretch it. So this time I'll hold down shift to the inside there. And now this is kind of the fun extra you can add 